Welcome to another podcast of uh, Life Talk, guys. It's been a while. It's been a long time. We had quite some time to set up this podcast corner here in uh, the beautiful office in Golden Mile, Marbella. Please, if you have any suggestions of guests that Casper and me need to be hosting here, you please let us know. The last podcast we actually did together. Uh, that was the last one. Yes, this was the last podcast because... After that, we did the introduction. We've been talking about like what we're going to be doing. We talked about your story. And I am really sorry that I had such a long time to just get things going again. But here we are. And uh, Casper, I want to thank you, first of all, for allowing this to happen, for allowing this space to be here and just to get a really good guest and conversations going. Uh, there's a lot to be talked about. Uh, we live in um, uh, quite some challenging times so to say we are both from two different generations so i think that's what is going to be very appealing to see what your perspective is and mine and see what we can learn from each other instead of talking about our differences from a different perspective mm -hmm. um so what connects us what can we learn from each other and where are we heading with the current market situation how you been since our last podcast when was it the last podcast a couple of months ago a couple huh? months ago i think so yeah mm -hmm. Um, good and uh, thank you. They thank you for uh, being here in uh, in our space, and I think uh, we have a good relationship. And I think this is a really good start of new new uh, developments. I think um, it's now the beginning of September, so the summer is a little bit behind us in Marbella. And uh, as you know, it's always if you live in an, in, an, in an area like this with a lot of tourists so you have your peak moments in august july august are peak moments it's really busy here and now it's getting a little bit back to normal and i like that the weather is still in the summer mode it's still 30 degrees every day but you see it on the on the way uh, around porto bonus marbella it's much more quiet and I think it's, I like it, I like uh, this this time of the year, um, April, May in the beginning, September, October, I think that are the, the most beautiful times here in, in the south of Spain and uh, hopefully it's, it's, it's going to, it starts raining again this month or next month because we need it. I was yesterday, I went to uh, Ronda with our business club and then if you see, and it's quite scary if you see, it's normal it? for this time of the year, but you see some places that are so, so dry. Mm. So um, I hope that, uh, so, so yeah, to summarize, it's going well, uh, happy that September and hopefully that uh, the rain helps us through the whole, uh, for the rest of the year. Amazing. How's the business been? How's Good. Yeah. I was on holidays um, the first two and a half weeks of August and always when I go on holiday, so next time I will tell you up front something happens with the market and the market went, I, I, I went on Thursday, yeah. and I left Friday, the market went down the day after, Monday the, the market was down. So I was in Colombia in Medellin and I was calling with Martin and my mm -hmm. colleague, he's sitting normally behind me about the market because it, go, it went really fast. Uh, we recovered a lot and, uh, and also this week it's also going down there's a little bit of pressure on, on the market maybe mostly based of the the outlook of the economy of the US and uh, and and so yeah it's 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 an uh, it's a moment i think that we are on on two different paths we can recover again mm. um but also yeah this can also be the beginning of an uh, of a new uh, slide going down yeah so we we noticed uh, for the people that are actually investing that have also listened to our previous podcast we talked a little bit about the market conditions and we we've seen it change very rapidly we've seen the situation in the world change very rapidly so i just wanted to talk about that i received some questions about Warren Buffett going more liquid now. I don't know exactly the numbers. I don't have them in front of me, but he sold a big portion of his Apple stock uh, recently, which everybody now is watching. Like, hey, there's a reason why he's doing that because he's expecting a market crash, which is not a bad thing to happen because as an investor, you can then buy back cheaper. So is that what he's doing? And is that where you expect we're heading? Now, first of all, I think Warren Buffett is the best investor in the world. So, so uh, you have to listen to yeah. him. Uh, you, he, if he says something or he does something, you must pay attention to it. Yeah. On the other hand, he, he was already cash for years. So he had already 
a big cash position for years. Also, his story was, uh, I expect a, 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 a drop in the market. Um, so he's not always right. Mm -hmm. And it's also funny, um, but because we have a lot of investors, they're, they're buy and hold investors, so they buy a stock for the long term and they never touch it uh, for five years. And then after five years, they will rethink what they got, what they want to do with it. And then they, they say, yeah, Warren Buffett is also a buy and hold investor. But actually, Warren Buffett is not a buy and hold investor. He's an active investor. He has a really big portfolio and he has a lot of Apple shares, but he trade every day in those shares. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, he reads everything, of course, and then he decides, okay, I'm going to buy some extra Apple shares. Or as, So maybe 95% of his Apple shares he holds until uh, recently where, where he sold a big part, but normally he holds like 95% and he trades with a small part. Mm -hmm. So, But but it, that's for the, the perception. I think people should realize, so he has a, a long-term vision. He, he holds his stock, but in the meantime, Meanwhile, he trades also with it. So he's not only a buy and hold investor. I think that what he's doing that makes sense because markets are high. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look to the, at the past, I don't, I, I don't know anything about the future because it was, but something that's high can go higher. But if you look at the past and if you look at the averages of the markets, the market is quite high. So I understand what he what he is doing, and also what I never understood from him is that his big position in Apple, because I don't know the figures exactly, but he had so an exposure in Apple, it went well, he made a profit, but from an investment, investment perspective, with those figures, mm -hmm. I find it more logic if you spread more. So his individual exposure in Apple was so big, I didn't understand that always completely. Got it, but I obviously am from a different generation, as I mentioned before, where we... You don't see that. So no. I know, I, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't tell, right? You wouldn't tell. The thing is where, well, when I talk to my peers, we're talking about the next crypto wave, where as like maybe you're looking at a, a when I speak to you, I feel you are very on the conservative side, but when you speak to your peers, you're, you're just not, right? So I just want to talk about a perspective for a moment because we see uh, a lot of my peers, like 20, 30 year olds get wrecked as we call, uh, mm -hmm. because they see on, on social media and I see online, they see a lot of profits and a lot of 100, 200 X, thousand X on tokens, on cryptos and they feel like, hey, if I can, if, if this person can do that who was 14 years old, I can do the same, right? So I think it's necessary to talk about this for a second because I, it's cool. I, I really see some good guys get wrecked heavily. I've seen people even close to me, I won't mention their names. We've had conversations where they sold their home to get into crypto with yeah. their entire life savings, hoping that, and, in, and by the way, in some cases that went into Bitcoin, they actually had a very good success story, more money than you can make on any real estate. And um, it's not in my benefit to say that, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and what, what is your perspective on that? I'm sure you're seeing that, even though your your demographic is mainly people, I think, that are, that are a bit older, like maybe 40 plus. Nah, yeah, first of all, we have clients from, mm -hmm. from, from really young to really old. But yeah, we have an, uh, yeah, a big part of our clients of the group is like 40 plus. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I, have, I, uh, I know a lot of clients that are in the 70s or 80s, and they're also investing or trading with Bitcoin. Um, but they do it on the side, and I think I spoke last time also about. It. I think that's good. It's you have you, you have different asset classes where you can invest in your real estate, your gold, mm -hmm. uh, you have cash, uh, you have shares, and, and I think that 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 crypto is an asset class. Mm -hmm. And um, I think by spreading your risk of you all with investing, you must always think about your risk, and one way of. Uh, risk management is spread your investment over different asset classes. So I will. I'm not never saying I will never go in gold or or, or I should. You put up everything in in real estate. I have a lot of money invested in the stock market, but I also have real estate as investment. Mm -hmm. Do I think that I make more money with real estate? That's not the question. The question is, I spread my risk mm -hmm. because I I don't have a glass ball. I don't know the future. 
but I and I can manage my risk. I can't manage my returns. And I think that you can also in you can trade with uh, cryptocurrencies, but you can also invest. You can say, okay, I believe in crypto. It will go to hundred thousand within the next ten years, and I leave it. And and I, 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 I decide for myself a certain moments to step in. Mm -hmm. Then you then you look at from an investment perspective, and you do that for five or ten percent of your liquidity of your net worth. Okay, then then you have a plan. But I would never do put all your money in gold or all your money in a crypto or all your money in shares. And so so is it an asset class? I think yes it is. And but then you have to decide where, where I'm gonna invest in. And I think it's really good what you said about that there's a lot of, in social media where people show only their profits. Um, and that's really dangerous because yeah, especially young people, they believe in that. Mm. And but it's also humans are like that. If you if you are successful in something in a trade or in an, in something you did, you are proud and you express it. You want to show it to another. And if you make a loss, yeah, it's not something that you are really proud of. So you're not going to say. It. So it's also normal that people on social media they they share their profits. On the other hand, I think it's also dangerous that they show only the profits and that people believe in it. Why? Because they always say if you put money on a saving account and you get 1%, 2%, but that's an easy way to do it. There is not an easy way to make 20%. That doesn't exist. You can make 20% with investing or trading or 30%, but you have to work hard. You have you have to know the products. You have to do risk management. And then, then it's possible with trading in uh, Apple, uh, Apple uh, shares or in uh, in a crypto. You mentioned oh, we have to work hard. That's I think exactly the problem. The, the generation now, mm -hmm. uh, even younger than me, eighteen and up, between eighteen and twenty four. These guys they don't want to work hard. They want to get rich quick. And this is a, a mindset a problem where I think that. It needs to be addressed and talked about because I feel that we're we're disconnected. I feel that not just it's gonna cause problems for our future and for the way we build things, our, our the cleaners we need, uh, the the guy in the restaurant that is gonna serve us. I see more and more people are getting lazy. Our yeah. society is getting lazier. They all want to get rich quick. They want to, and to get that that golden nugget, that stock that's going to like do a thousand X. Like I really want to talk about like expectation management from an expert like yourself, who's you've been doing this your entire life. You build a business around it, in my eyes, conservatively. So, uh, you know, guys, I, I see too many like people getting wrecked, as we say, thinking that they can become millionaires in one week. Are there people that actually are doing it? Yes, of course. It's not just all fake. I know some people firsthand that actually found that meme coin, but that's luck. That's like winning the lottery. You know what I mean? That's not, yeah, that's not investing. It's luck. It's luck. Yeah. It's luck. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, in, especially in this, this crypto market and in any market, there's always winners and losers. If one guy is going to win, another guy is losing. So that's something that you have to put in perspective. Oh, but on, on the other hand, I think that the big dip, after the big dip, a, a lot of people realized mm -hmm. that it, that crypto cryptos are high risk. Mm -hmm. A lot of people stopped. But also a lot of people, they, they said, okay, uh, I accept the high risk in it, but I, I'm going to change my strategy. And they maybe they are now focusing on technical analysis and they take stop losses, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's also the people that go on with it. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if something doesn't work and you don't change your plan, the chance that it doesn't work again is big. But if you change your plan, you're okay. You now you realize the risk aspect and you adapt that in, in your strategy. And then you can, you, you can be successful. It's also possible. So I think it's, it's, you know, when we have a new investor that never invested, I hope always, and sometimes I say it because some people, they, they understand when I'm saying sometimes things, they say, okay, that's a little strange to say, I don't understand. I hope that their the, the first trades, that they don't make money with it, they lose money on it. Because then in your system, in your D DNA, from the first moment you, act, you, you realize the risk. 
because if you if you if, and that is also the problem with with the COVID period because of a lot of people were at home they started investing through the stock market or in cryptos and a lot of money came into the market so price went up so a lot of people they experienced for their first investments they experienced huge profits mm -hmm. and it's normal we are all humans they they think oh that's normal but it isn't normal so if you if you think that's normal you don't look at the risk you don't build build, build in stop losses mm -hmm. and then suddenly it happens and then oh yeah oh it is also possible that they can lose a lot so i think that that was for a lot of people and there are only a few people that step in low and they step out high and never go back again uh, in it so that that that's also luck right? that you decide when you don't do anything anymore but i think that the people that keep on going and if they change the strategy they can be successful and if you like if you trade it doesn't matter where you trade in mm -hmm. because you trade it doesn't matter if you trade in uh, in tables or in cars or in crypto or in the ducks future it doesn't matter because you make small profits so you must understand a little bit you get much affinity with the underlying value so with the ducks or with the tables then you have to trade with it and then trading has nothing to do almost with investing mm -hmm. because you use just the products to step in and step out understood yeah and I, i'm really glad you touch on this because it's um it's, it's a topic that uh is, is is sensitive we talk a lot about well, i'm sorry yeah, to interrupt yeah, yeah. you but i think that you know when when was the gold rush in the us 1800 uh, something i believe it's also in humankind we want to we want to out the beach is 300 meters from here i think most of us want to be on the beach and make money during being on the beach every day and we are also all everybody has some laziness in 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 her or in him and i think it's it's good to have a drive to to earn money eh? that i think we need that drive and also to earn it in an in an easy way the drive is good mm -hmm. but then if it doesn't come the easy way you have to do something mm -hmm. to get the money because then you are thinking about being more effective and more um, and more smart if that's your drive so the drive itself is good but you must also accept that the world is not that we you can sit here or go to the beach mm -hmm. and make the money without doing nothing that is only is only for it you. doesn't help though that daddy government prints unlimited amount of money while now people start to wake up from that that money is not real money is a created and concept that holds no actual standard or value anymore as, as we had in the past with the gold right it was tied to the gold standard well when did it end like 74 or something 1974 yeah. something like that so we're, we're we're looking now at the amount of inflation we're now looking at that there is banks and institutions federal reserve that can they just have to press a few buttons and we're here in today's world where there is ai some jobs become absolute obsolete we have the psychology the collective psychology around the world where we see that jobs become obsolete where we see that the government is printing unlimited amounts of money so the trust in the system as we know it becomes lower and lower so therefore, hey, wait a second. I see these young guys printing money, thinking that I can be free, income, all these things. Of course, with diversification we talked about. But to be fair, I understand why this younger generation yeah. is starting to be like, hey, you know what? Why, why, why am I doing this? Why, why am I part of this system, this, this slave thing? away for a piece of the pie while there's others the elites are printing unlimited amounts of money yeah so so i i, I understand it i also want to reach out to you like it's 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 like it's not that i don't resonate or don't emphasize with it yeah. however i'm also an optimist I, I i do think that if we get especially the younger generation if we get really caught up in in this dark rabbit hole then we won't don't want to do anything anymore no, no, like no. we have to this is no. this is part of our life we have to find our way we have to bounce back our world is going to change the way we know it now it's not going to be the same we're going to get rid of cash cashless societies are going to be coming they're going to control the way we spend control the way we we live our lives it's already happening in china by the way social credit course uh, score system so 
it's it's out there it's coming but yeah but but i do agree with you mm -hmm. but i also want to say something against it and especially for the young people because oh. for example if you look at the, the financial crisis of 2008 it started in the beginning of 2008 so it began on the stock market and then later mm -hmm. it went into the real economy also if you look at the, the the crisis before there was a big crisis on the stock market in 2000 markets halved the governments printed less money during the financial crisis than what they did in the last covid crisis mm -hmm. let's say like that they printed less right. and you can also say because of that the crisis existed for a longer period and a deeper period because if a crisis stays too long it's getting it's it's getting uh, more deep and it's it will hurt more sectors and more people so you can also say by printing what what happened uh, a couple of years ago Okay, inflation went up, another negative uh, aspects. But on the other hand, because of that, there wasn't a deep crisis because we helped a lot of people in society. We helped governments, we helped private persons, uh, we, we gave them uh, um, uh, money on energy. Uh, uh, all kinds of aspects were going on. And um, maybe that helped going into a deep crisis. Mm -hmm. So printing money is not only... Uh, negative understood that's a good point there and right now we're we're in a situation where but but you know what's inflation but 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 governments you know if you print money what will happen with the economy you can wait for it so what i what i don't yeah i don't like of the governments and from the central banks if you say okay we we um we we lower the interest rates we print money then you know you can wait for high inflation and then you should warn people eh? you can you can you sh they should act up front because you can do something against inflation and you can say okay we make agreements on energy level on housing level on a salary level and the governments and or the people that are in in charge of those decisions they know exactly what what the outcome will be and they know exactly which month the inflation starts and probably toward a certain level and that's i think you can blame them because they they turn that uh, button okay uh, printing money low interest rates and they know okay if you do this and this then it will pop, pop up there so they should shouldn't have act on and act up front and not okay now we have high inflation and what now or what now so what are your thoughts on the cashless society that's coming for us all i think uh, we are both from the netherlands mm -hmm. i think the netherlands already has a big cash uh, that you, you you are hardly can't pay with cash if you go to the us it's more the opposite there are a lot of places that they they you can only pay with cash. Mm -hmm. um, Germany is also a much more cash country than uh, than than the Netherlands. Spain is a little bit in between. So I think we are not we are not yet in that uh, society. I think that you should always uh, um, to have two streams. Cash and um, and I always have I have everything on my phone, but you can see it. I've had always like hundred euros in my back of my phone because I want to have cash. And I think you should not push society in the direction you should, you can help. And I, th I think there are also benefits of of paying uh, without cash money. But I think you should not. It's also like electric cars. It's the governments push everybody to an electric car, but I think it should always. It's always the solution a little bit in between mm -hmm. a hybrid car, a petrol car, an electric car. That, I think that's the solution. Don't force people to go because now, especially Germany, has big problems with their cars. So thirty percent of their car production is uh, GDP of Germany. So it's a really heavy sector. Mm -hmm. And um, now that they're realizing that they pushed so much, they invested so much in the electric car industry, they are losing it from the Chinese. So they don't know what to do. Do they, do they need to go back to the petrol? Do they shift to, to other uh, products? So if you push a society to one direction, then always things happen. So I think it should be a little bit imbalanced, not too strict. You don't think it's about control, controlling your money, controlling what you do with your money? Knowing yeah. exactly where and how you spend it. Yeah, yes and no, because I think um, if you are with a corporate, with a big bank, and you have and you pay everything with that card, they, especially in Europe, you have quite strict rules. Mm -hmm. They can't sell, for example, that data. That's not allowed. So 
and that data is not widely spread over society. You, you, you mentioned China. China is a different story. That eh? you 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 get the credit points, and if you have enough credit points, you are first in line in, in the bus. So social credit store. Yeah, yeah, cool. but yeah, but I don't I don't believe in that. But you don't think that's going to come here? That you don't? No, I don't think so. No, I hope not. Yeah. And I also maybe it's more hope than, than what I think. But I, I don't think that's okay. And I think that's not not. So I I think that. <laughs> The, the information about your payments are in the hands of the banks and they can't do a lot with that information. So you're thinking it's not going to come for us here, uh, even though they're introducing that slowly and gradually, where also now they're doing the insurance, where they're going to check how you live, how your spending is, you pay your bills on time, and then those are very like mild things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They're, getting, they're gonna start with insurance. Oh, wait, you're a good person, you pay on time, yeah. you don't smoke, you don't spend on cigarettes, yada, yada, yada. All right, check, check, check. You can get a better rate than your neighbor yeah. for this insurance on your car. But, 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 but that's where it's yeah, gonna start. Yeah, yeah. And now in China, they ban people from the subway, from the train, because yeah. they spoke out about the government yeah. or they said something critically. So our freedom of speech is is clearly under attack and not just in China, it's yeah. happening slowly and gradually here. I hope you're right. I hope it's gonna stop there. Yeah. Uh, that it's just gonna be a yeah, centralized but, system. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. So it's about data, no? What, what what does somebody knows about you? It's about it's yeah. about allowing yeah. freedom but, with our money, yeah. our money yeah. we work for, and not being able to be controlled. Yeah, but I think As an example, yeah. if I, I should be able to speak freely on this podcast without having fear of consequences. The moment I have to now be scared because of somebody mm. is going to think or do this to me, I am no longer mm. speaking freely, yeah. which is a big concern. Even in the West, we see it happening. People get canceled, people get banned, people get restricted access to their bank accounts. Yeah. Like it's scary things. Yeah, I, I, so I, 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 I do disagree that, that it's, it's like not happening. I do see it happening and it's like, Hey, listen, if you have cash, at least they can block that. In fact, if there is a power outage, we've seen it before. Uh, it was recently uh, my wife and me were on the road. We tried to pay for gas. I'm like, uh, excuse me, sir, uh, our system is down and you cannot leave. I couldn't leave because I just put gas in the car. She said, you have to pay. I'm like, how? That's why so, I have the, always the 100 euros. Yeah, yes, yeah, so exactly. So this is why I was able to the hybrid model to pay with cash. But yeah. guess what? If I didn't have the cash with me. Yeah. You know, so this is another thing. Like, yeah. it, it just... But, uh, but uh, if you look at a society, then you have the banks, there are a certain sector. And you have the, the private uh, sector and you have the government. And I think what you mentioned, it's, it's about somebody knows something about you. So it's about data. I know. So mm -hmm. uh, you have the financial data, your payments, uh, what do you do with your payments? But I think that's only one part. If you look at, uh, yeah, if you, uh, by the way, I agree with you. I remember now when I still lived in the Netherlands, like 20 years ago, what I did, I, I it just pop up in my mind. What I did, I went to the, to the cash machine every Friday, at, I think it was six o'clock, and I took 100 euros out of the, out of the machine, something like that. So I, sa I, I said to myself, if I do every time the same thing, I, there's no pattern, so they know nothing about me. So you do see that I, that I think like that. It just popped mm. up in my mind. I did it for maybe half a year every year, yeah. and then I spent the money. But I think that, that was 20 years ago now, I, I think that, what I just said, banks, aren't, they can't do that much with that data. I think if you look at so the private sector, you look at Google, if you look at Apple, mm -hmm. what they know about you, and they have also their restrictions, but they have less restrictions than banks. I think you, if you worry, and I understand your worries, I think you should me more focus on that sector, the private sector, than on the banking sector. Okay. Then, then of course, within the banking, you can have multiple accounts, and you can have a Revolut account, and you can, uh, and, or you do what I did in the twenty years ago. You go to the cool cash machine at the yeah. same. Uh, I even went to the same cash machine every day. So I thought. So I do agree with what, what you're saying. I think in Europe we have an, another his, history than in China, and I think it will always be different. But I think the the most 
Uh, worrying part is more, I think, in the private, in the, in the big corporations. But uh, the insurance companies are also uh, one part of that. Yeah, and also right now, just to add on that, the thousand euro limit, uh, if your expense, as an example, you go to store, whatever, if the expense is more than 1,000 euro, you cannot pay with cash. Yeah. If it's under 1,000, you can. Uh, you can also not deposit more than 1,000 euro to your bank. So they're imposing restrictions as we speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening in real time, you know? So, But they're the governments. So governments say per country, this is the restriction yeah. on the... the, 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 the yeah. And they say, and I do also understand that a little bit. I do agree with, okay, uh, uh, a, big of, a big part of the, the money laundering is grown through cash. Because if we can push that out, then... Yeah automatically we probably have less money laundering so that's one of the arguments and i do believe in that oh no, of course that, that that's that's the, that's the the good part about it yeah. but i think that's the only good part the uh, the other part i think outweighs any any restriction and cashless society that uh, that we're going towards so we're going to have ai we're going to have jobs that are going to be kind of absolute obsolete we're going to have cash yeah going to be disappearing it, it's it's happening in real time good and bad and then we have people asking all right where we're heading or where where should we what should we be doing with our cash yeah. Should we sit on it? Should we wait? Should we wait until the market crashes? Is it going to happen? Is it going to? So there's so many questions right now, and the world is like in a dark place. Yes, um, but you said you said in the beginning you're positive. I am an optimist. Yeah, yeah, yeah optimist. I'm absolutely. Also, yeah, but I'm also a realist. I, I yes, but I think I think Jesse that is there are always times. Mm -hmm that there are problems in the world. And we had, with the financial crisis, 2008, and 9, 10, it was really, I was here in Spain, it was really, especially here with unemployment rates of more than 20%. In Marbella, a lot of people left, so it was, it was, it was a strange energy here. We had the dot-com crisis in 2000. We had oil crisis. We had uh, the war in 95 in Yugoslavia. Um, there are always problems in the world. I can't remember that, that, the, that we lived in a time there was nothing was going on. So that's always the case. And I think if you look at Europe, we, we live in Europe, I think Europe is also has problems. But on the other hand, we speak to, if you look much further back in time, mm -hmm. in Europe, we always were in war with each other. The French with the English, the, the Dutch with the Germans, the, 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 the Dutch with the French, the, the French with the uh, Spanish. There was always war. And now since World War II and of Yugoslavia with the 95, but we are working together. We are talking to each other. So I think there are also positive movements. If you compare, you, you should not look at it from a really small time scale, but from, from 100 years ago, I think we're now we're living in a quite peaceful world except what's happening in Israel, and except what's happening, of course, in Ukraine. The big difference right now is we're not fighting each other anymore. We're just guns and sticks and stones. We're talking about nuclear warfare, which means if one person pushes that button, it's over for, for many of us. I wouldn't say all, but it <laughs> depends on how big it is, but yeah. you know what I mean? And that's where there is this anxiety around the world and people like, okay, this is different. This how, how big do you think that chance is that one of both parties is pushing the button? Are they, are they, are they... I mean, this is a very political question, a politically loaded question. Um, I mean, right now, uh, it's likely, right? If we look at, I think the, the, the there's like levels of uh, expectation and I think we're in, what is it? Um, what is it called again? The US has this um, stages. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's like, I think stage three, you have stage four. And then after that, it's 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 like it's been happening. So it's it's high, it's likely, it's that, yeah, likely that's what it is or highly likely, something like that. So we're looking at Russia, we're looking at Israel, we're looking at what's happening um, and, and those, the, the world is watching that. Yeah. And that's also why I believe somebody like Trump, as an example, by the way, was on X and retweeted me. I think he is one of those disruptors. That's why I tried to assassinate him as well recently, where like, we can talk about this for hours, 
where a gunman was able to walk up a roof mm -hmm. without being seen. Anyway, so whatever you think of Trump, he is going to go against the establishment. He is getting there and we're going to see what's going to be happening. I think the United States is a big player into what the rest of the world is going to be looking at, has been looking at. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. And it's also scary. Why? Because it might, if the opposite side is going to win, we might also see a lot of fighting just in the country, uh, which is going to expand all over. While Trump promises to end the wars, to go in, in communication, because he's a strong leader. He has a certain presence, you know, so his people. So that's what the world needs, like dim diplomacy, but with a strong leader. But Nobody do you, took Biden serious. But do you think if you speak with, with a, you, you speak with a lot of people, is the fear of a nuclear war, do people talk about it with you? Is that yeah. something they have top of mind, yeah? I mean, uh, you, you're on X, right? On Twitter? Yeah. Former Twitter, like... Mm -hmm. You see it trending a lot. Like yeah. um, right now, like at least once or twice a week, I see it trending. Yeah. So that means if it's trending, it means people are speaking about this happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this happens, people are like, this, you know. So this is this yeah. is obviously something that doesn't live with me. It doesn't live with the world. And I'm talking to you about it because it's yeah, yeah. so it's it's like. Hey, if people are seeing that, they're seeing what's happening. I I, I don't hear it that much. Um, because we live in a bubble. Yeah, I know. Who knows? That also or, live. Yeah, but, I, uh, but I'm watching US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching yeah, like, yeah. late at night. I'm like researching because I have a lot of US friends. My biggest audience still is US till this day. And I love the USA. And the rest of the world, believe it or not, is watching the USA, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Right? The US dollar is still I, dominant I, I, currency. I think I think if you look at uh, at the, the Reagan period, I think he did a lot of good things. So yeah. um, he was afraid of for, for one thing and it was for communism. And the, the yeah, the the big players now in the world are the Russians and then the Chinese. So a lot of people, all Americans will say that you see, okay, he was right in that period. Not only he, it, it, it are, that are the aggressors. On the other hand, um, I think that um, it's also an interesting time and it's interesting to see the, the, the position of China. And I think that if you look at the history, China is not an aggressor. If you compare Europe, uh, we 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 are always good in pointing uh, at at uh, finger at other places. Oh, what are they doing there? And what are they doing in the Middle East? Well, look at uh, ourselves. Uh, what what Europe did? I was in in uh, Colombia at the beginning of last month, and I was in Cartagena, a beautiful city, mm. and it's completely Spanish. If, if if Spain didn't conquer the northern part of the south of of, of America, uh, it wasn't uh, there was buildings right there. So I think it's always we as Europeans we should always be a little bit careful to judge that easy to uh, to other parts in the world. And I think especially China, China hasn't. Of course, the discussion about Taiwan and I had yesterday also a discussion about it. I th they they are not the aggressor. They never were the aggressor. Maybe, and I'm saying it now and tomorrow they will uh, they will attack uh, Taiwan. I don't think it will happen, but we should take that into consideration. And I think it's also really interesting what's happening, the role of America, the elections, China, Russia, India. Uh, I think it's also really interesting to see what happened and, 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 and what movement what will yeah i hope that, that we don't talk about winners but that we uh, mm. that we make some solutions so it's it's ridiculous very politically correct of you so i was i was just hoping for you to say the the possible winner but um i guess you won't go there anyway i uh, in, a, in a war are no winners no no, no i mean like like the, the elections oh the elections uh, you have a you have a you have a favor you have a winner I do agree with you that Trump is a strong leader. Mm -hmm. And I think what you always see, if somebody goes for the second term, uh, you never go for the third term because it's not, uh, not allowed. Mm -hmm. So in, in the second term, somebody can do more uh, because he's not, he, uh, he, he can do more because he knows that it, that's the last four years. Mm -hmm. And I think that he will and he can go into the history books of the person that uh, made the solutions. And 
Uh, I think he's the example of one example of the American society, and the, and it's a good, a bad, a, a left, a right, and he he has already, I think, on one uh, paper the solution for Israel, and on the other paper on the back side, exactly. he left the, the, the solution, and I think he can he can do that. I think he can he can succeed in that, and I yep. think that's the best. The, the 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 best thing that we can have for the for the near future if those problems are solved and I think he's the best man for that job. Um, I think he's also he's I think he's not the the best president. I think he's also I think what he did, what he's doing with the climate uh, that is too too strict. I think mm-hmm. he is yeah he he doesn't see any climate. Uh, risks and I, I don't agree with that and and I think it's and I remember maybe also remember that when he was president every day the newspapers were about Trump front page Trump said this Trump did that and he had to rectify or this or people so it's 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 also so um I think that Biden does more on the background and I think um yeah, that's it should be a mix between with between different parties I think okay. is it again a political one uh, yeah I, I do think so but that's all right I mean that, that's all right that's why we're different no it's all right listen I I, I am uh excited because we're gonna wrap this up oh. I wanna I want you to uh end with some advice we're already uh like yeah. on, on a time uh, stop now because we started later it's almost 7 30 believe it or not we can talk on for hours we're gonna do more yeah yeah, yeah we yeah. better do some, you know, some more actual topics yeah, 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 actual topics and, people, and yeah. uh you know some some value this is just like uh like i said uh guys we're back uh we're gonna be doing different podcasts again i'm very excited to bring on different kind of guests and we're gonna be having different kind of conversations entrepreneurs investing trading uh the world situation politics love psychology you name it kind of life uh, there's so much to talk about. There's so much to share. I'm very excited to pick this up again here in the podcast corner. Casper, uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. You asked me for the last advice. You want to- exactly. What are the last words? Now, I think that we live in a difficult time, but there are solutions, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe in mankind, and I think people will make solutions. Uh, so I'm positive about the future. And I think from an investment perspective, it's it, you always should look... You never should listen to somebody else. You can listen, but you have to make your own decisions. And if somebody says, okay, Berkshire Hathaway is now more cash, you should buy Berkshire Hathaway. You should make your own plan. You say, okay, I have a certain amount of money that I want to invest. I have 20% invested now. Then you can look in this time mm-hmm. or invest the other 30, 40%. If you have nothing invested, you can buy almost everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think that, um, but if you are heavily invested, you should be careful. And I think there are always chances and make your own plan how active you want to be. It's also if you and if you want to be in crypto, decide for yourself the percentage in crypto. Don't believe the people uh, on the television that say that the economy is fantastic. Don't believe the people on social media that this crypto is the, will go up to 200% in the next days. Make your own plan. Listen, but make your own plan. Amazing. Lovely advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great as always. Thank you. Thank you.